I took the popular AI for everyone course on Coursera for you, and I've distilled all the key lessons into this bite-sized video so you don't have to. But it's not enough just to watch. To really make this stick, I've included a quick quiz at the end of the video because research shows that reviewing information immediately after learning it is the best way to help you remember it. So stick around till the end to test what you've learned about AI. Okay, this is how we're going to break it down. The course itself is divided into four modules. The first module will talk about what AI is and it isn't. Then we'll talk about how to build AI. We'll also talk about what it takes to integrate into companies and the impact of AI in societies. I'll walk you through each module with simple terms. So let's dive in. All right, well, starting with module one, what is AI? At its core, AI is about teaching computers to make decisions based on patterns in data. For example, you can detect if an email is spam or not, or identifying what is being said in an audio clip. AI is used to power all kinds of things like spam filters, speech recognition, or even tools like ChatGPT. But the key to everything is that AI needs data and a lot of it. So what exactly is data? You can think of data as a fuel for AI. Imagine a table with house sizes and prices. AI can use this kind of data to predict the future prices for the homes. But more data isn't always better because messy or irrelevant data can make things worse. So you want to have quality over quantity when it comes to data. Now, you may have heard of terms like machine learning and deep learning. And Andrew in the lecture says that even in industry, these two terms are used interchangeably. But to give you a rough definition, machine learning is the field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. Programmed. Whereas data science is a science of extracting knowledge and insights from data. For example, machine learning helps ad platforms predict which ads you're most likely to click on, running nonstop in the background to increase revenue. The result is usually a piece of software. In contrast, data science looks at patterns like noticing the travel industry isn't buying as many ads and suggests action like sending more salespeople to talk to travel companies. So the result here might be a slide deck or a report. And one company can use both machine learning and data science to answer different types of questions. Now, deep learning is a type of machine learning that uses neural networks to solve complex problems like predicting the housing prices. It was inspired by how human brains work, but it's not exactly similar to real biological brains. And the term deep learning is just a new name for what we used to call the neural network or artificial neural network. They all mean the same thing. But how do these terms all fit together? Well, AI is a broad broad field and machine learning is a major part of AI. But there are other AI tools, like all the buzzwords that you hear a lot, like generative AI, reinforcement learning, knowledge graphs, and etc. Deep learning or neural networks is a type of machine learning, but there are also other types of machine learning tools. Data science, on the other hand, have many definitions that people don't necessarily always agree on, but Andrew defines it as an overlap between AI, machine learning, and deep learning, plus other tools to analyze data and drive business decisions. The the rest of the module is about what AI can and can't do. And basically, to sum it up, AI is good at tasks with clear patterns and lots of data, but it's not so great with complex or nuanced problems like interpreting human gestures or predicting stock prices. Let's say self-driving cars, for example, AI can detect other cars using cameras and sensor data, but it kind of struggles to understand nuanced human gestures like a construction worker signaling to stop. Is it saying hi or saying stop? So this is still being improved and developed. And that is a wrap for module number one. Okay, next we're going to talk about how to build AI projects even if you're not a super technical expert. We can divide the workflow of a machine learning project in three main phases. First, you get the relevant data like speech recordings for voice assistant or images for a self-driving car. Next, you train the model, teaching the AI to make predictions using data. Then you use the trained model in real world applications like powering a voice assistant or car's navigation system. So how is it different from a data science workflow? Data science focuses on extracting insight rather than 
and making predictions. So the workflow could include first gathering the data, which is the same, and then you analyze it to find patterns or trends in data. And with that data, you can generate hypothesis. Then you make suggestions and changes based on the insights. In the rest of the module, Andrew explains how data is changing jobs and fields like recruiting, sales, marketing, manufacturing, and even agriculture, making work more efficient and improving decision making. By understanding what AI can and can't do, you should do the research to make sure to check the feasibility, value, and impact before implementing AI projects. Just because it can be done with AI, it doesn't mean you should do it. Basically, don't just slap on AI to everything like a lot of companies are kind of doing nowadays. So make sure the problem you're trying to solve is appropriate to solve with AI. Now in module three, we're going to dive into how to build AI in your company as a group. And what that means is that AI teams are not just ML engineer and data scientist. There are actually many other roles involved with building AI projects. And the first person you need is a software engineer to build the infrastructure and user-facing applications. Then you would need a machine learning engineer to train and optimize AI models. You may also need machine learning researchers to explore cutting edge AI methods. And there is also a type of role called applied machine learning scientists who can do a little bit of both to implement research into practical solutions. Data scientists will help analyze data for insights and data engineers will manage and pre-process large data sets. You would also need AI product managers to define project goals and prioritize tasks. So you would need all of these roles if you have a large team. But if you are starting a small project yourself, you can also handle all of these roles yourself because AI projects can be built even by just one person. Andrew also talks about common pitfalls to avoid, including things like don't expect AI to solve everything, be realistic about AI's limits, also don't rely only on ML engineers. You want to pair them with business talent to make sure you're solving the right problems. Don't expect instant success from AI projects because oftentimes you'll need a lot of iterations. Also, don't use traditional planning for AI projects. AI projects can be very different from implementing traditional projects. And lastly, don't wait for superstar engineers. Build with the team you have. People often wait for unicorns to solve everything. And I love how Andrew explicitly says that we should hire people who have done online self-studies. And the last section in the module are tips for taking your first steps in AI. And tip number one is start small by choosing manageable projects to build confidence and expertise. Number two is to work with friends, colleagues, or other AI professionals whenever you can. And that's why I created a LinkedIn group where people can come together and share ideas and work together. It's called Achieve Together with EXA. So come find me if you're looking for a free community to join. Tip number three is to experiment and learn by treating failure as learning opportunities. And now you're ready to build an AI project. And finally, in module four, AI and society, let's talk about the societal impact of AI. There are tons of exciting opportunities with the rise of AI, but there are also challenges to navigate when working with AI, like number one, bias in AI. AI can make biased decisions if its training data is flawed. So it's important to have diverse teams and fair data practices. Number two is an adversarial attack on AI systems that tries to trick AI into doing something it wasn't meant to do. So strong security is necessary to make AI systems more safe. Number three is about developing countries and how they can use AI to grow industries and really boost their economy, creating equal opportunities for everyone. Lastly, AI-driven automation could replace many jobs, but it will also create new ones. So to handle this change, a lot of us will need to keep learning, governments should support policies, and businesses need to help workers learn new skills. I do have a video on what jobs will be disappearing and emerging in the future if you want to check that out. And congratulations, you're now ahead of many people in understanding AI and you're ready for the quick quiz. It's only five questions and you can write your answers in the comments or just say them out loud as you watch. Whatever you do, trust me, this will help you remember everything better. And here's number one, what makes machine learning different from traditional programming? A, it follows specific rules to get results. 
B, it learns from data to make decisions. Number two, which role in an AI team turns research into real solutions? A, machine learning researcher. B, applied machine learning scientist. Three, why is repeating steps important in AI projects? A, to improve models based on real feedback. B, to finish projects faster. Number four, what is a common problem with AI systems? A, they can be tricked or show bias. B, they don't have enough data. Number five, how can people prepare for job changes due to AI? A, keep learning and gaining new skills. B, focus only on simple tasks. Great job, here are the answers. And now if you want to learn more about which tech jobs are on the rise and which might be disappearing due to AI, watch this video and I'll see you there.